When an entity calculates its greenhouse gas emissions, the resulting record is called a greenhouse gas inventory. Many people are surprised to learn that over two thirds of Fortune 500 companies have already developed greenhouse gas inventories. That brings us to another important question. Why would a company want to develop a greenhouse gas inventory? In this lesson, we are going to focus on five main reasons. The primary reason is compliance. Many governments now require large emitters to report their emissions annually. For example, on an international level, the countries that have ratified the Kyoto Protocol require large emitters to submit annual reports. Here in the US, we have several mandatory programs for reporting greenhouse gas emissions. Some are already in effect, others are scheduled to go into effect in 2011 and 2012. In the Northeast, there is a regional greenhouse gas initiative, also known as REGI. REGI is the first mandatory market-based effort in the United States to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It consists of 10 northeastern states that have pledged to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from the power sector by 10% before 2018. In California, there is Assembly Bill 32. AB 32, which became law in 2006, is a market-based approach to regulate greenhouse gas emissions that is slated to go into effect in 2012. In the West, there is the Western Climate Initiative, or WCI. The WCI is a multidimensional approach to regulating greenhouse gas emissions through market-based mechanisms, low carbon fuel standards, and renewable portfolio standards for the power sector. It is a regional initiative that comprises seven US states and four Canadian provinces. On a national level, the US Environmental Protection Agency has passed a mandatory reporting rule requiring companies that emit more than the equivalent of 25,000 metric tons of CO2 per year to submit annual reports of their GHG emissions. In addition, in February 2010, the EPA signaled that it may actually begin to regulate GHG emissions in 2012. Initially, only the power sector would be regulated, but eventually, the regulations would cover 70% of U.S. emissions. In addition to the EPA regulations, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission recently announced that all publicly traded companies must disclose the potential financial impacts of climate change on their business. These include the impact of legislation and regulation, the impact of international accords, the consequences of changing business trends, and the potential physical impacts of climate change. In addition to existing regulations, Congress is working on a comprehensive climate bill that would cover 85% of the nation's greenhouse gas emissions. Managing risks and identifying opportunities. Another reason companies are developing greenhouse gas inventories is to manage GHG risks and identify reduction opportunities. Greenhouse gas risk is a relatively new concept used to describe the potentially negative impact that GHG emissions can have on companies. For example, in the context of greenhouse gas regulations, significant emissions can increase a company's costs and reduce its sales. Also, since greenhouse gas regulations are designed to increase the cost of GHG emissions over time, emission-intensive assets will likely lose value. In response, some entities are developing GHG inventories to better manage these risks. In addition, a number of companies are developing their inventories to identify GHG reduction opportunities. Companies are beginning to realize that even in the absence of regulations, reducing GHG emissions can have a direct 
positive effect on the bottom line. Reducing emissions lowers costs because it reduces the resources used and the waste generated, increasing efficiency in the process. Reductions also create the potential for generating carbon credits. As you can see, in a world of rapidly evolving regulations, reducing emissions has become a real business opportunity, with significant advantages for companies that get it right. In order to reap the financial benefits associated with this type of sustainability initiative, a company must first identify the most cost-effective ways to reduce emissions. This process begins with the development of a GHG inventory. Voluntary reporting programs. Many entities are developing GHG inventories for public reporting purposes. As concerns over climate change grow, organizational stakeholders are becoming more interested in corporate disclosure of GHG information. Customers are beginning to consider sustainability aspects when they buy products. Employees are beginning to value their employer's stance on sustainability. And investors are beginning to care about how companies are positioning themselves relative to their competitors. In response to these concerns, companies are starting to participate in voluntary reporting programs, and the number of these programs is growing throughout the world. Some programs are geared towards large corporations, some are geared towards municipalities, while others are specific to colleges and universities. Perhaps the most well-known, the Carbon Disclosure Project, also referred to as CDP, is a global reporting initiative that started in the United Kingdom and works with shareholders and corporations to disclose GHG emissions of major corporations. In 2008, CDP published emissions data for over 1,500 of the world's largest corporations, accounting for 26% of global emissions. Today, more than 2,500 organizations in 60 countries disclose their emissions through the CDP. ICLE, pronounced as ICLE, <laughs> was really spelled I-C-L-E-I, is an international association of local governments that have made a commitment to sustainable development. One of their initiatives is a voluntary GHG reporting program geared towards municipalities. As of 2009, over 1,000 local governments around the world are reporting their emissions through ICLE. The California Climate Action Registry, also known as CCAR, was established by California statute as a voluntary registry for greenhouse gas emissions in the state of California. The registry is currently being used by more than 300 corporations, universities, and municipalities. Its purpose is to promote early voluntary action to reduce GHG emissions. Members voluntarily measure, verify, and report their emissions. In turn, the state of California works to ensure that members receive appropriate consideration for early actions. This brings us to the next reason that companies develop GHG inventories. Recognition for early voluntary action. A fourth reason why companies develop GHG inventories is that a credible inventory may help ensure that early emissions reductions are recognized by future regulations. If a company reduces emissions before regulations go into effect, but does not document and report these reductions, the reductions likely will not be acknowledged when regulations are enforced. For instance, AB 32, which is California's law for the regulation of GHG emissions, will go into effect in 2012. While there is still uncertainty about how AB 32 will be implemented, entities are being encouraged to take early voluntary action in the meantime. In order to encourage these actions, the state is developing a process that will allow entities to report their early actions so that the reductions can be considered for credit against future AB 32 obligations. 
Participating in carbon markets. A final reason that companies are developing their GHG inventories is to participate in carbon offset markets. A carbon offset, better known as a carbon credit, is a tradable commodity that represents the reduction of one metric ton of carbon dioxide. Carbon markets can either be voluntary or mandatory. In voluntary markets, carbon credits are bought by companies for various reasons, such as preparing for regulations and improving public image. In mandatory markets, purchases are compliance-driven. That is, buyers are using carbon credits to offset their own emissions in order to comply with limits on their emissions. Carbon credits are a key component of any market-based approach to regulating greenhouse gases because they reduce the overall cost of compliance. In essence, the trade of carbon credits allows one entity to buy offsets from another entity that is able to reduce them more cheaply. For companies that have low-cost options for reducing emissions, these reductions could potentially be classified as assets. These assets could realize substantial value when regulations go into effect. As you can imagine, companies are becoming increasingly interested in carbon markets as they realize that carbon reductions are, in fact, assets waiting to be created. At the same time, competitors may already be learning how to create carbon credits, which would put them at a strategic advantage. In the coming years, it will be increasingly important for companies to understand the strategic implications of carbon markets on their competitive landscape and investment decisions. But in order to take advantage of carbon markets, a company must first identify its reduction opportunities. Developing a greenhouse gas inventory will help entities identify and realize these reduction opportunities.